Okay, great. Everyone ready? Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for coming to EnvoyCon 2019. This is the first talk that our team has done about the work that we have been focusing for the past few months. So Mike and I are really excited to be here to share the progress that we've made um, over the past few months. We just heard a great talk from Spotify about uh, the value of running Envoy at the edge of your infrastructure. In this talk, we want to introduce Envoy Mobile, which is a child project of the Envoy ecosystem. And in it, we want to extend the concept of the edge to our mobile clients. We want the mobile clients to be another node in the network, part of the mesh. So our talk will guide you through the story of Envoy Mobile in four parts. First, we want to discuss the justification for bringing Envoy to mobile. As any engineering project, it's a big investment of time and resources, and we want to, to show you why we think it's, valuable. it's a valuable project to embark on. After that, we will dive deep into what it took to bring Envoy to mobile. After that, I'd like to discuss where we are now, both as an open source project and also in its integration with the Lyft app. And lastly, we want to share some of the exciting uh, roadmap items that we have planned moving forward. So let's begin with the motivation of why bring Envoy to mobile. With the introduction of Envoy, a lot of companies, Lyft included, have deployed a network topology similar to the one you see up there. Envoy is dealing with every hop of the network, all the way from the edge of the infrastructure into the service mesh, and even out to third-party services and our data storage primitives. Envoy has done a great deal of increasing reliability and observability in the backend infrastructure. By having this universal network primitive that is performant, reliable, configurable, and extensible, we have largely made the network transparent to our backend engineers. And importantly, when problems actually do arise, Envoy's best-in-class observability has made it increasingly easy to debug network problems. However, our premise, the premise of my team, is that 3.9's server side is actually meaningless if the users of mobile, of mobile applications can actually complete the network flows only a fraction of the time. With Envoy Mobile, we propose that we can extend all the benefits of Envoy at the, at the backend infrastructure all the way to our mobile clients. But this vision requires a paradigm shift because traditionally we've treated our clients as separate from our backend infrastructure. We've treated them as a unique problem that requires unique solutions that are platform specific. So really we can't say that Envoy has become a true universal network primitive if all the network flows that are mobile platforms that we use day in and day out start and end with the mobile clients, the one hub where Envoy is not running. So we are proposing with Envoy Mobile that we don't need to treat the mobile clients any differently. Like I said, we want the, the mobile clients to become part of the network, to become another node in this mesh. However, ex existing solutions are platform specific. And thus, we can say that we have this universal network primitive that will homogenize the behavior of the network end to end. In other words, today there's no open source solution that can run everywhere as this universal network primitive. And this is where we see Envoy Mobile fitting in the ecosystem. So with this project, and by extending the last mile of our, of our network topology, we want, the, we want true standardization of the network. Similar to what Kubernetes has done for standardizing container orchestration, we want Envoy to do for the network. And we believe that Envoy Mobile is that next logical step in this standardization process. So why is, why is this standardization useful? Well, we think that for largely the same, some of the same reasons that standardization was useful in the back end, standardization will be useful between our mobile clients and the edge of our infrastructure. For one, we can write, one, write code once and deploy it everywhere. By having the same universal network primitive end to end, we can embark on projects that would be otherwise prohibitive due to the engineering costs of having three implementations in iOS, in Android, and then in our backend services. With Envoy Mobile and Envoy in the backend, we can implement things one and deploy them, deploy them everywhere. For instance, we can 
experiment with protocols like Quick. Second, we can share common tooling for common problems. By having the same metrics, for example, be emitted by our mobile clients and our backend infrastructure, we can use the same tooling and the same monitoring infrastructure in order to really see the network end to end. We can allow our, our engineers to operate with the, same, with the same metrics all the way from the mobile clients into the edge and into our backend infrastructure. And lastly, and related, uh, by having the same network stack everywhere, we can reduce the cognitive load of these network engineers uh, by having them expect the same behavior through and through. Today, Envoy Mobile is running in the alpha version of the Lyft app. But before we got there, we had to real realize that this was even something that was going to be possible. Envoy itself is back-end server software. It runs in a dedicated process with multiple threads. In order to run on Android and iOS in a sandboxed environment as something that the applications could use, it would need to run in a thread in the app, which required rethinking assumptions about how Envoy was run, how it was even built. Fortunately for us, Envoy is built with Bazel, which is a powerful build system which offers parallelized builds and incremental builds. Bazel also has strong cross-platform support and uh, cross-architecture support. This allowed us to solve one of the initial problems with actually targeting multiple architectures and targeting multiple platforms. Our first proof of concept was simply getting Envoy up and running on mobile clients, running it on iOS, running it on Android, wrapped in a thin layer of an application. Our library necessarily requires code across multiple languages for multiple platforms. We have Swift, we have Objective-C, we have Kotlin and Java, we have C bindings, and we have Envoy as the core. This naturally led us to something of a layered architecture. You can see on the right, we have actually Envoy itself as one of our Bazel targets. Envoy is the core of Envoy Mobile and actually performs all the heavy lifting. It is the same software path that Envoy uses to carry requests in the back end. Additionally, we have code which maps directly to Envoy, which uses Envoy's native types and interfaces. And this, this is the core layer of our library. Above this, we have our common bindings, which allows us to be cross-platform. These were decided to be C bindings for maximal support across different languages and platforms. And then finally, we actually have code that's written for Android and for iOS, platform code that exposes high-level interfaces to which client developers, application developers, are familiar using common patterns and common types. But even with this layered architecture, we still need to answer an important foundational question. How do you take something which was designed to run as a server, to run as a process, and run it instead as an engine? Envoy itself is designed in such a way, again, something that we've been able to leverage, that most of the code in Envoy is actually written as if it's running in a single threaded context. Most code doesn't deal with synchronization or crossing thread boundaries. This was really useful to us. We knew we were going to be running in a thread which was not the root thread of the process, and one where we have to actually have external control over how things are run. We are able to leverage this threading model in Envoy to actually move things all to a single thread, to Envoy's main thread. Additionally, of course, we have application threads which are going to need to call into Envoy in order to manage its lifecycle and actually issue requests. This is a networking library at the end of the day. And finally, we have callback threads. Envoy needs some way to actually signal back to the application that something has happened, a response has been received, or an error. These callback threads, of course, might be application threads. In fact, they're provided by the application, again, using native mechanisms to their respective platforms. So on iOS, you have Grand Central Dispatch and Dispatch Queues. On Android, you have ex executors and runnables. But the importance is the flexibility here, that this be another unique context where we can dispatch work. If we take these three different threading contexts, and we also take these three different layers of the library code, and we overlay them into a matrix, we can actually visualize the architecture of the library a little bit and talk about how we've solved the problem of moving between threads and moving between layers of the library in a way that allows us to run Envoy on both iOS and Android. For starters, 
when the client developer goes to create an Envoy client, what they're going to use ultimately to manage the engine's lifecycle and issue requests, the engine is now responsible for starting up the Envoy runner thread. This is the thread upon which Envoy will run. Again, in this context, Envoy is actually single-threaded. It's not multi-threaded like it is when it's running on the server backend. However, this Envoy main thread is the same main thread from Envoy's perspective as its main thread is running in the background. Again, we're leveraging the same code paths, the same initialization path to run this. Now, Envoy on the back end is multi-threaded. There's the main thread and there's worker threads. When a request comes in, a listener assigns a request to a worker thread and that worker thread will handle a request for the lifetime of that request. When the worker thread actually needs to communicate with the main thread, it will use an event dispatcher, a construct that's backed by a low-level event library, to actually dispatch that work, thus avoiding unnecessary shared state and synchronization. Additionally, on occasion, a worker thread that's handling a request will need to actually dispatch work that's asynchronous and out of band. Maybe that's for authorization, a call out to an authorization service, or maybe it's for rate limiting. In Envoy, an async client construct is used for this to issue these side requests. For Envoy Mobile, we've leveraged these two constructs. We've used an event dispatcher and an async client to actually form the core of our direct API into Envoy. Not an API that's mitigated by a socket, but actually one that's mediated by direct function calls into Envoy's core. So this gives us a way to actually send work into Envoy and have Envoy dispatch requests for us. But it still doesn't come close to solving the whole problem. When the application gives us a request via its high-level APIs, it's giving us types that the application understands, created in Swift and created in Kotlin, or Objective-C in Java. And moreover, it's using memory that the application manages. Envoy doesn't know anything about how these platforms manage their memory, and conversely, these platforms don't know anything about how Envoy manages memory either. Fortunately for us, Envoy actually has a fairly powerful buffer abstraction that it uses already. In Envoy, buffers are an abstract wrapper around individual fragments, and these fragments are what actually knows where the physical memory is. Each of these fragments has a done callback. Once Envoy is done with the fragment, it can call done, it's done IO or whatever, and the buffer can be released by whatever mechanism is used with that fragment implementation. We've extended this concept at our intermediary layer, our bridge layer. This has allowed us to actually map this done callback back to platform-specific concepts of memory management. On iOS, we have automatic reference counting, ARC. On Java, we have the garbage collector in the JVM. They have their own unique characteristics, but the important thing is that we wanted to avoid actually needing to tie logic that was bridged closely to Envoy to how memory is going to be managed in the platform. Instead, what happens is these unique buffer fragment implementations map that done callback back to the actual platform memory management schemes. This allows Envoy to signal when it's done with a buffer, and the buffer can be potentially freed, but that's really up to the platform. Maybe the platform's keeping the buffer around for longer. We won't inadvertently free it before the platform's done with it. Once we've converted types into an appropriate form that can actually be passed and represented as Envoy's native types, now it's time to actually hand the work off to Envoy's event dispatcher. From here, it's passed to the async client, and the request goes out to the open internet. This is actually an area where we've contributed to Upstream Envoy to allow for further support in this library. We see this as an ongoing opportunity. Running Envoy as a library means we can generalize concepts in Envoy and create new abstractions, as well as potentially do refactors that provide overall benefits to Envoy, both when it's running in the back end as a server and when it's running as a library. Once we've issued a request, we'll eventually, hopefully, receive a response. We need to surface these responses back up to the application somehow. We do this with callbacks. Again, though, we have this common binding layer, which is something that allows us to be cross-platform and portable, but it's not something that the application understands. We knew we wanted this library to be easy to use. We didn't want client developers needing to understand the various characteristics of function pointers in C to actually be able to leverage the library. Our own callbacks are necessarily C function pointers. Our bindings are C. However, we wanted client developers to be able to use their own dispatch mechanisms and their own concurrency concepts for actually passing callbacks down to the library. 
This means we needed platform-specific dispatchers, and it's with RC bindings where the platform provides its own dispatch mechanism, as well as its own callback mechanism that can be mapped to plat the platform's own concept of what a Lambda is. On iOS, you have Grand Central Dispatch for, for actual dispatch, and then you have blocks commonly used for that, for concurrency. On Android, um, we've elected to use the executor pattern, which has been around forever, as well as runnables to allow for a maximally flexible interface to support a variety of different concurrency mechanisms. Now, to actually make this work with C callbacks, we need a way for Envoy to call this code, which it has no way of actually understanding. This code path is, of course, coming out of Envoy through our bridge layer back up to the platform. In order to accomplish this, we leaned on an old C pattern, wherein when the platform provides callbacks, bridged callbacks to Envoy, they actually contain a type-erased context in addition to a static C function pointer, both of which the platform provides for its own unique use case. That C function pointer can't capture state. It's just C. But because it has this void star context, the platform can attach whatever it wants alongside that static function. When Envoy calls that function, that function then has the necessary logic to understand that context that's been passed through and actually rehydrate the lambda, providing the platform with a native callback handled via native dispatch. We've deliberately made the design decision with our library to actually have our request path and response path be almost entirely unsynchronized. This is important not only because of simplicity, and it's a pattern that Envoy already follows, but it also allows us to handle the case that in mobile applications, the place where a request is called may actually be remote from where the response is handled. Reducing shared state means that we can reduce complexity in supporting these use cases and instead provide strong contracts around the timing and the handling of our request and responses. The, the one notable exception to this is actually cancellation. Cancellation is handled as an interrupt and again provides strong contracts around when it's handled and is dispatched both downstream and upstream simultaneously. Thanks for an excellent deep dive into internals of the library, Mike. So, with all of that built, I want to proceed into where are we now, both as an open source library and also in its integration into the Lyft app. A few weeks ago, we released version 0.2 of the library, which we consider to be alpha ready for everyone to experiment with it. While the API might change a little bit, we, we think that the design decisions that are foundational to a library are very sound. Additionally, for a little over a month, ago now, uh, we integrated Envoy Mobile into the Lyft app for the alpha release. Uh, this is actually a picture of our team taking the first Lyft ride ever where all network calls were dispatched via Envoy Mobile. We, of course, went to grab some donuts. So let's take a look at how we actually integrated Envoy Mobile into the Lyft app. At Lyft, we have taken a model-based approach to designing our APIs. What this means is that when an engineer wants to expose a new public-facing API at Lyft, all they have to think about is writing this proto. Then, after the proto is written and committed, our generation pipelines actually generate um, clients in all the languages that we support at Lyft, both for our mobile clients and also for our backend infrastructure. Getting to this state of uh, model-based APIs was a gradual process, and if you're interested in this aspect, uh, please look out for a blog post and a talk from my colleague, Michael Rebello, which is actually going to come to the Lyft Engineering blog sometime later this year. So on mobile, we go a step further, and we actually pre-compile the, the files into, into package modules. This allows us to reduce compile times uh, for our mobile clients, and it also allows us to uh, better organize the APIs and their dependencies. What this means is that we can really experiment with the implementation details underneath these packages um, for, for a variety of reasons. Explicitly, for Envoy Mobile, what this means is that we can swap transparently classic networking libraries like URL Session in iOS and OKHTP in Android for Envoy Mobile, and that's what we did. So let's take a look at the actual API calls that are done by our app now. 
Um, one, of the, one of the things that I want to highlight here is that uh, we have made it our goal to make our high-level ergonomic APIs uh, pretty identical between iOS and Android. So here you see up top a Swift example and below a Kotlin example. For the rest of the slides, I'm going to only show Swift code, but you can assume that, a Kotlin, that the Kotlin code is pretty identical. So the first thing that the, that the application does is create an Envoy client. And what this does underneath the hood is actually instantiate and create the Envoy engine that Mike was talking about. At this point, we have uh, exposed some configuration elements. So for example, we allow you to change the log level of the engine or even the stats flushing interval. Then you can build a request with that, to use with the engine. Uh, here you can add, the, for example, the API path that you want to hit on the remote host. And we have exposed the ability to attach custom headers or even uh, network constructs like a retry policy. And I want to emphasize here that the retry policy that we expose actually maps to Envoy's retry behavior because at the core, it's Envoy that is running that network logic. Lastly, you build a response handler that will, re that will receive the callbacks uh, back from Envoy, like Mike was describing. So for example, you might have an on headers callback or an on data callback that will be mapped up to, um, to application code. To wrap it all up, you submit the request and the response handler with, to, to the engine. And the engine allows you to interact with this open stream, for example, by sending data and then subsequently closing the stream. So while Lyft has integrated with Envoy Mobile using this model-based approach, uh, we actually plan to, to make Envoy Mobile a drop-in replacement for a lot of mobile applications. So we know that this means exposing compatible bindings to classic networking libraries like NSURL Session and OKHTP. So we started this project with the premise that 3.9 server-side was, was not enough and that mobile clients uh, were really prime candidates to benefit from the same standardization that the backend infrastructure has received by deploying Envoy. At Lyft, uh, when we, once we integrated with the, Lyft, with, with the app, uh, we took this as our first opportunity to start experimenting with the benefits that we could, that we could actually see. And stats were actually the first, the first step there. So we all know that Envoy has best-in-class observability. For example, it flushes hundreds of time series metrics every stats flushing interval. These stats have become invaluable to operate the network at Lyft, and I'm sure at a lot of your companies. Now that Envoy Mobile is running on the Lyft clients, we actually had access to the same metric stream as we had in our backend infrastructure. So really, the goal that we're trying to achieve here is for an engineer to be able to observe the network end-to-end -end from the mobile client into the backend infrastructure by using the same metrics. Stats is actually one of the points that uh, we have already get, gotten dividends from uh, having Envoy be the core of Envoy Mobile. Because uh, thanks to Envoy's uh, great extensibility, we actually leverage the metric service StatSync to get, to get stats out of Envoy Mobile. The metric service allows us to get time series metrics via gRPC, so we built a very simple uh, gRPC service that could receive those metrics and then emit them to our already existing um, metrics infrastructure. And just like that, we can start plotting the same metrics that we see in our backend services for our mobile clients. So for example, here you can see the request count up top coming from the mobile clients and below coming from our edge infrastructure. I really want to emphasize how powerful this construct is because it really is giving us insight into parts of our infrastructure that we did not have before. This is just the first of many examples of how Envoy Mobile can really start unlocking a whole new wave of potential in our mobile clients. Stats are a super big deal for us. Actually having that level of insight into mobile clients is something we've struggled with for a long time. Even when we instrumented them ad hoc, we dealt with discrepancies between the implementations and inconsistencies between client versions and between platforms. Having stats turned on opened the floodgates. Having the same visibility into our clients and our backend is really remarkable for us. That said, 
We are very early on in the project for Envoy Mobile, and we see immense opportunity here. In the near future, we're going to be experimenting with a quick protocol, rolling out to, out to our mobile clients. With Envoy Mobile, rather than needing to work with quick implementations that are unique to both Android and iOS, as well as our backend, we can roll out a single stack and have a lot of the work done for us by Google, who's already working on it in, <laughs> in Envoy. Secondly, Envoy has its extensible filter chain, something which Spotify mentioned. Actually leveraging this on the mobile clients as well, as well will allow us to develop single solutions for multiple patterns. For instance, auth is something we can solve in a universal way, not only in the back end, but we can also solve auth in a filter on the mobile client as well. Compression is another example. Rather than needing to roll out compression with unique gzip implementations, we can do the same thing in a filter across all our nodes in our network. It even opens up the opportunity to explore, explore things like Google's own new compression algorithm, Broadly. We would ordinarily never consider implementing this on our mobile clients and backend, simply because the resources required would be too much. Instead, with a single implementation, we can try it, deploy it everywhere, and see how it works. Envoy itself already has intelligent behavior in how it selects connections with health checking and with various load, bal load balancing configurations. We see this as a concept we can extend further to actually allow Envoy to intelligently select connections over different interfaces, be it Wi-Fi or cellular, or fall back between different protocols, quick or fall back to HTTP, IPv6 or IPv4, to have a rich set of possible technologies the mobile client could be using to communicate with us, but be intelligently selecting the one that's actually working at any given time. Jose mentioned the model-based API we use at Lyft. And while we want to expose a variety of bindings to Envoy Mobile to allow it to be used in, in use cases as simple as HTTP up to actual model-based APIs, we see a huge opportunity with mobile APIs or with model-based APIs and actually plan on supporting them first class in Envoy Mobile. By doing this, we think we can actually expose the ability to annotate these models as well with how they should be communicated with the server in varying network conditions. This could range from annotating entire models with certain retry policies down to actually annotating individual fields with whether they should be included or dropped based on the current networking conditions. You could further even mark models as something that are deferrable or something that Envoy can fake a success for when it's offline so that the application flow can proceed while Envoy will handle the actual synchronization of state in the back end later on. Envoy, of course, has rich dynamic configuration. And this is something where we see a huge opportunity for mobile clients as well. Actually, using this configuration would allow us, in theory, to change the network topology all the way out to our mobile clients on the fly without needing to deploy new app versions. This could range from something like incident response or failover scenarios down to actually doing something like rolling out a new pop, which would traditionally require things like changing DNS. Finally, we're already exploring opportunities to extend Envoy Mobile beyond our actual phones. Lyft has its fleet of rentable transportation devices, which are prime candidates for running Envoy Mobile. They face many of the same networking challenges that our phones do when they're out in the wild. We've also had interest from people thinking about IoT and or even have people who are interested in the project from the perspective of using Envoy simply as a C networking library to replace libraries that are written in other languages. One of the most amazing aspects of Envoy is its vibrant community, and this is a big part of what's made the project successful. We've made the deliberate decision to develop Envoy Mobile in the open. It is already open source, and though it's a small project, still very early on, we're making rapid progress, and we welcome both input from the community on what your needs are, as well as contributions to the project. We're very excited for the road ahead, and we look forward to working with you all. Thank you. We have, I think, just about a minute left, a little bit more, in case anyone has any questions they want to ask really quickly right now. Yeah, over there. Oh. I'm sorry, can you? Um, yes, I think all the presentations are going to be recorded, and the slides will be shared. We're definitely happy to share these slides as well. Potentially, yes, but I... 
repeat the question? Oh, I'm sorry, yes, okay, yeah. So the question was, and let me know if I got this right, do we see tension between the server-oriented design of Envoy and the SDK-oriented use case? Is that... Um, Yes, I mean, potentially there could be, but I think that whether or not we encounter that and whether that actually is you know, inherent complexity or incidental depends on some of the design decisions that we make as well. So part of this project is simply discovering and thinking about how to run Envoy as a library, which is sort of core to Envoy anyways. It's simply a new use case for Envoy. What we envision is having the necessary components of Envoy be generalized and abstracted to the point or configurable to the point where we can actually have different modes that they run in. Certain parts of Envoy will, of course, always be oriented towards running in the server. At one point, we may actually strip those out from the actual part that we ship to mobile clients as a, as a platform. But again, many of these core use cases really are quite parallel. At the end of the day, we're trying to send requests over a network. We'd like visibility to those requests. We'd like to control what happens to them when they're in flight at different hops. And we think that those core levels are really the most important shared aspect of this, and that's really what we're driving for. I think that's all the time that we have, but we're, we'll be, we're gonna be here all day and through the week, so if you're interested in the project, please come talk to us. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.